Hello friends and welcome to Monster Monday. Today's episode, I've got a good little guy and it's the fairy dragon. Fairy dragons have been around for a while. Um, and you know, I've, I've covered some things from the Feywild, but Really, fairy dragons um, are something that I haven't used a lot as a DM in D&D. Um, but this was a request from Jeremiah Torres, and uh, I thought I'd read into it a little bit. And it's got some interesting lore, and I've thought of some interesting ways to use fairy dragons in your campaigns and adventures and encounters. So let's start off with a little bit of the description. A uh, fairy dragon is a cat-sized dragon with butterfly wings. It wears a sharp-toothed grin and expresses its delight by the twitching of its tail, its merriment fading only if it's attacked. Invisible tricksters. The only warning of a fairy dragon's presence is a stifled giggle. The dragon stays out of sight, watching invisibly as its victims contend with its pranks. When its fun is done, the dragon might reveal itself, depending on the disposition of its prey. A fairy dragon has a sharp mind, a fondness for treasure and good company, and a puckish sense of humor. Travelers can play to a fairy dragon's draconic nature by offering it treasure in the form of sweets, baked goods, and baubles in exchange for information or safe passage through its territory. A fairy dragon's scales change hue as it ages, moving through all the colors of the rainbow. All fairy dragons have innate spellcasting ability, gaining new spells as they mature. And then in the monster manual, there's a chart that displays the dragon's color. Um, so the youngest ones being red, then it goes orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, indigo violet. So the Roy G. Biv is your way to remember. Um, as those go down that color spread, um, they get older, more mature, and more powerful. Let's take a look at the um, armor class. So first of all, these are tiny and they're chaotic good. Um, so what that means is that you're not gonna probably use the fairy dragon as an enemy who's gonna maliciously be attacking people. This is a fun prankster, like many creatures from the Feywild. Um, their intent is not malicious as much as it is um, just to, to kind of you know, mess with people, have fun. A little bit of that but I do think that there's some really cool opportunities to integrate the fairy dragon into an adventure or even ongoing in a longer term campaign setting so um, armor class 15 hit hit points 14 um, strength of three you know so you're talking about a really small petite creature um, but they have a huge dexterity of 20 and a decent intelligence and wisdom and pretty high charisma. Um, they speak Draconic and Sylvan. Now the challenge rating on this is interesting because it's based on their color, which is also linked to their age. So uh, red, orange, and yellow fairy dragons are considered challenge rating one. And we'll see why when we look at their innate spell casting. And then for green, blue, indigo, and violet, they're considered challenge rating two. And I honestly would be willing to fudge those rules in my typical Monster Monday fashion. Um, you could decide that an indigo or violet fairy dragon has a much higher armor class or a much higher spell attack or spell save DC and probably throw them a whole bunch of hit points. So, you know, you, you could kind of mess with that if your intent is to use a fairy dragon in a longer term campaign setting. So here are some of the crazy things that fairy dragons are capable of doing, okay? Superior invisibility. As a bonus action, the dragon can magically turn invisible until its concentration ends, as if concentrating on a spell. Any equipment the dragon wears or carries is invisible with it. Um, that's just any time it wants to as a bonus action for as long as it can concentrate on doing that. That's pretty amazing. Limited telepathy. Using telepathy, the dragon can magically communicate with any other fairy dragon within 60 feet of it. Now, that brings to mind an idea because I've thought of the fairy dragon as a solo encounter, you know, a prankster who might mess with some, some adventurers 
but could also be a valuable resource for information. And when you throw in multiple fairy dragons, maybe the adventurers have stumbled upon their domain on their way to whatever destination or adventure they're going to. And these multiple fairy dragons don't like intruders, so they prank them and mess with them. And depending on how your party deals with that, this could turn into a situation where the fairy dragons are defending their turf and they've decided to lay down the smack and prank these adventurers and really you know, give them a lot of griefing, um, which could lead to things like exhaustion from not being able to sleep, all that kind of stuff. The fact that they could communicate and plot strategically together through telepathy while they're invisible is pretty incredible. Um, then, as if those two things weren't enough, you have magic resistance. The dragon has advantage on saving throws against spells and other magical effects. So right out of the gate, even the most basic, like little red fairy dragon, who's five years old or less, has those abilities. But wait, there's more. They have innate spellcasting. The dragon's innate spellcasting ability is charisma based, so they have a 16 charisma, which is pretty fat. Spell save of DC 13. It can innately cast a number of spells requiring no, ma no material components. As the dragon ages and changes color, it gains additional spells. And again, for me, I would scale up those guys on the blue, indigo, and violet so that they have either more castings, more hit points, more armor class, um, higher spell save DC, higher spell attacks. Real easy to scale them up to make them a bit more buff. Um, you could even tra change their size from tiny to small or even medium. Who knows? Maybe you have a violet one that's big. Um, so check this out. The reds, once per day, have dancing lights, mage hand, and minor illusion. Then they get a little older and they become an orange. They get all those spells plus color spray. Then when they get yellow, they get all those spells plus mirror image. Green gets all of those plus suggestion. Blue gets all of those plus major image. So you see where this trend of tricksterism is? There's a lot of illusion magic contained in there. Um, but wait, when they get to indigo, they get hallucinatory terrain. That's a crazy mad spell that gives the DM all sorts of fun, um, especially if you describe it the right way so that the players aren't certain if what's happening to their characters is real or not. Uh, then at violet, they get polymorph which again is huge. A fairy dragon could polymorph into any number of things that could become a whole bunch more deadly. Now, this goes back again to thinking about how you use this as a DM. You know, you're not probably gonna throw a fairy dragon or groups of fairy dragons at your players that often. So make it count, make it part of the story. That's the key here. To tie this into your adventure arc to make them valuable to the party um, if the party is able to weather their storm of pranks um, and gain their trust. Because after all, they are chaotic good. Chaotic, but they're also good. So they're not out to maliciously, you know, just rambling and killing any people who trespass upon their domain. Um, so there's a good chance that the party, if they play their cards right, could quite literally gain a powerful ally or multiple allies in these fairy dragons. Let's take a look at those actions. So they have a minor bite attack, um, which, you know, whatever, it's like one piercing point of damage. Kind of pointless, uh, especially with the profound amount of magic that they have. Um, then they have Euphoria Breath. So this is a recharge breath weapon. It recharges on a five or six. The dragon exhales a puff of euphoria gas at one creature within five feet of it. The target must succeed on a DC 11 wisdom save, or for one minute the target can't take reactions and must roll a D6 at the start of each of its turn to determine its behavior for the turn. And then they have a small chart. One through four, the target takes no action or bonus action and uses all of its movement to move in a random direction. Five through six, the target doesn't move, and the only thing it can do on its turn is to make a DC 11 wisdom save, ending the effect on itself on a success. That's the jam right there, because it doesn't intrinsically do any harm. And again, it kind of goes back to my feeling with exploring fairy dragons, even in, in other lore and other games and editions of games, 
is that they're not meant to be malicious or malevolent. They're, they're tricksters uh, by nature. So this way the euphoria breath can, can mess up a party without like injuring the party. So how do we take these cool little creatures and go beyond just a simple encounter? So if the fairy dragons know a way through a dangerous area and the party's able to gain their trust, what a valuable ally that's become for this adventure, right? Maybe the fairy dragon or fairy dragons decide to assist the party, but they need assistance, okay? Maybe there is some actual evil threat to the fairy dragon's domain. Um, pick a bad monster, right? Some dis despiler, some defiler, right? Any number of the really, truly evil, malevolent creatures who might want to obtain some dormant magic that is within the fairy dragon's area, right? The fairy dragons themselves might not be able to fight off that malevolent foe, but if the party is willing to help them, this becomes like a side quest, a side mission. Now that could be as short or as long as you want it to be. Maybe the fairy dragons are willing to do much more than just guide the party through something. Maybe they're willing to unleash some secrets that they know that will help the party in return for the party's assistance in defeating these evil foes, whatever you pick. Right? So that could be an encounter that leads to an adventure. Now here's my, here's my killer part, right? Every time I'm reading through the fairy dragon, I can't help but think that what if this could be someone's familiar? Like imagine if you had an improved familiar who was your fairy dragon. Um, and I liken it to the pseudo dragon, but way more powerful in a lot of ways. Um, and I think, well, you know, you could do that as a DM. You could decide that somebody in the party could have a familiar who is a fairy dragon, but maybe, maybe they have to, have to like actually earn that fairy dragon's loyalty and respect first by doing something, right? Yet another side adventure, side mission, whatever you want to call it. Or maybe the fairy dragon isn't a familiar who is bound to the spellcaster, but you could have a fairy dragon become like an NPC who kind of joins the party. Maybe out of respect or loyalty because of the party's kindness and because of the party's compassion and their assistance with eliminating a, a malevolent, you know, evil foe who was threatening the, the sanctuary that the fairy um, dragon protected. I think this could be something that could be a part of your campaign group, a fun NPC, you know, instead of just a hireling, or even, you know, if you opt to not have it be a familiar who's magically bound, you know, um, the fairy dragon could be an ally a long-term ally that becomes part of the campaign. And I think could add a lot of really cool kind of fun situations. Um, as a prankster, you know, maybe the fairy dragons with the party, you've been traveling with the party for a while and sometimes decides to prank the wrong people. And then the party has to like deal with that blowback, right? Now they might find this annoying after a while, but it could create a really cool kind of character development. It could help the players kind of discover what matters to their characters, um, you know, and, and actually get more into the mindset of their characters as well by finding some level of compassion for this person, for this fairy dragon, um, and valuing them more than just like a strategic hireling or familiar who is bound, but actually as kind of a friend and a non-humanoid friend at that. So. That's about it for fairy dragons on this episode. Let me know if you've had experience with fairy dragons. As a DM or a player, share your stories in the comments below. I always read them, and I know that other subscribers and fans and patrons enjoy reading them as well. Thanks as always, guys, for your support. Make sure you hit that like button, and uh, if you're not a subscriber already, please consider subscribing. We'll see you on the next episode.